Hello everyone, Phoenix Knight here. Welcome to the channel, and welcome to a new playthrough on the channel. Last week we ventured to Northrend and stopped the Lich King. Today we're back into the final frontier, space. We're also into a very big game today as we play Zaya, Legends of a Drift System from Far Off Games. In this game, we start off as a low time, but hopeful, space pilot trying to become the most famous pilot in the galaxy. We can achieve this in any number of ways, whether it's through exploration, combat, or trade. Normally we play to 20 fame, but in this game, and I'll show off the fame track when we move up to it, we're going to be playing to 10 fame to keep the video somewhat manageable in terms of length. I'm also going to apologize in advance for what I expect to be a somewhat clunky video. I've enjoyed my first few playthroughs of this game immensely, but I'm very much still learning the game. As such, I'll probably be stopping a fair amount to check the rules just to make sure I'm doing everything correctly. Also, I will welcome in the comments below when I'm making mistakes. So, try to give me a rough timestamp so I can correct it for future playthroughs. Because the solo mode, one of the expansions in this game, intro actually introduces a solo campaign. So I could very easily step into that as, additional poten as potentially additional background content on the channel. So, just more food for thought there. But anyway... This game can get long even before factoring in stopping and checking the rules. Because, like I said, you normally play to 20 fame. But, and that's why I'm only playing to 10 fame in this video. With that, as usual, I did most of setup this week, so we'll work our way toward the board. But we'll take a stop first at my starting ship. Here's my starting ship today. I'm taking one of the Tier 1 ships, the Easy Tiger. So, as you can see... You've got space here for various mods, and I'll bring the mods into shot after I get done looking at after we get done looking at this because I've got to buy my initial mods for the game anyway. But basically, you're going to Tetris your mods in into your ship, and then you can use those as actions for movement, combat, or even potentially to defend if you find yourself under attack. But anyway, so we've got these we've got these arm markers. I'm going to put one on the eight on the energy meter. I'll bring these down to armed, so I can use those later. Then we've also got an impulse token that you can use for impulse movement to get an additional three movement based on whatever the, or whatever the impulse value happens to be. So this is the mini that I'm going to be dropping, but no. Actually, this is the mini I'll be using with the red uh, base on there since everything's being done in red. I'll move that over to the board and figure out, eh, it's really not going to matter where I'll spawn, but I'll point it out when we move over to the board to do initial setup. But anyway, so I also start off with 6,000 credits, and I've got a couple of special abilities for the, with the extra ship. So easy tiger. So it looks like the easy tiger has two special abilities, actually. Before we go through that, there is a little bit of backstory that I saw, so we'll take a look into that. Welcome, Captain. The ship's computer greets you as you enter the hatch. Captain, you like the sound of that. The ship was a real steal. The used ship lot you had you got her from must have been pretty hard up for a sale. These saps don't know didn't know what they had, you chuckled to yourself, while running through pre-flight. Just a little TLC and you had yourself a genuine if antiquated, Luftor. The jingle from their old motto starts playing in your head. No start too far in a Luftor. Time to see if it's true. So we'll rearm the armed markers, put the energy back up. And I'll explain more about how everything works, but energy can be used for, among other things, rearming rearming mods at the end of the turn. But anyway, now we'll take a look at the special abilities on the for the easy tiger. First we have a rapid tactical recalculation. So after, so tac X. Immediately after rolling any die, spend one energy and re-roll. This re ability allows you to re-roll any one of your own die rolls. You must take the new result, and it does cost an energy for that. Then what looks to be a passive ability is the hypercalc 32, preemptive theory matrix. When you would roll to use an outfit, Instead of rolling, you may treat each die as a natural three. Mods apply normally after the result. When you would roll for a border, 
Instead of rolling, you may treat the roll as a natural two. Use this power before you roll. Only applies to your own rolls. So I'll put those to the side. Mostly because we are going to be bringing the mods into shot. So I'm playing on easy mode. Normally it would start off with 4,000 credits. But because I'm playing on easy mode, actually we'll adjust that up. So those are the so those are the mods. I'm gonna have to zoom out a little bit so you can see. There we go. The mods on the ship, so you can see how I Tetris them in. But anyway, so you can see that the mods are in various shapes. We've got an L piece. We've got a longer L. We've got a cross. We've got several straight lines. We've got that rotating. We've got some various Tetris pieces, including the straight. So you can use those to arm for various actions throughout the game. And roll a roll a die the roll a side of die based on what you see on here. So for instance, if I was to attack with this Iris J7 missile, I'd arm I'd use one of my arm mark or my uh, arming markers on here and point and roll a D12 to do that much damage to it. Of course the targets that I'm rolling against would also defend, but anyway. Random using aside, so I'm going to spend. So for the, for my initial mods, I'm going to spend three thousand credits to get a Raptor K12 engine. So you can see the shape that is. I would roll. I'll roll a D12 when I armed that, and I've got three arm markers there. I'll talk more about how that plays havoc with the mods on the with some of the other things on the board when they pop up. Then. Looking at my situation, I'm going to spend... Mm, I try to work on something different each time just to kind of get the feel for the game. So this time, I'm going to work on engines and combat. So I'm going to spend 2,000 credits to get a... Sacker V... A Sacker, what is that? Probably a 5 blaster. I roll a D8 when I attack with that. And you can see I've got two arm markers there. So I will put that here. Then is there like a two piece straight for a thousand credits? I don't think so. No. All right, so that's all I can do for the time being. Anyway, like I said, we're working our way over to the board. I actually, this storage piece, this storage unit for the mods didn't actually come with the game. I got this off of Etsy from a shop called, what is it called? I think it's 3D. Let me see if I can pull this out without sending the mods, without sending all the mods flying. Ah, there it is. I can. So the shop is actually called 3D Print Wizard on Etsy. I'll provide a link to their video description or to the descript. I'll provide a link to their Etsy shop in the video description down below. I'll get that right one of these days. But anyway, we can bring that out of shop now. I may need to bring that in later during a status phase when I end up needing to buy mods. But anyway. That will do it for the initial setup on the ship. Now as I'm working my way over, we're actually going to stop at the various NPCs. None of these NPCs actually spawned on the board as it came through with part of setup. So I'll introduce more about these when, the, when they actually become relevant. So we've got the merchant, which that'll be the merchant mini when it comes onto the board. Then we've got the sellsword mark II, which actually doesn't come with the game base. It's actually one of the expansions that you can get, but it's basically another NPC. Then we've got the Scoundrel. I really do like these pre these minis that are pre-painted. It saves a lot of time on getting this to the table. And the Enforcer. Like I said, I'll introduce more about those once it comes up. And then we've got the Kiln, which actually does start in play. So we've got some spaces to dock with it. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So now we'll stop off at the Fame and Economy boards. Here are the Fame and Economy boards. You can see I'm using yellow as the representative of the NPCs for how they'll advance through the game. Our goal is to get to 10 victory points. So when we get to a pink space, we draw a new, a new event for something that'll impact the game. Every time we get to a yellow space, we'll draw a, t a new title that a player, a player can gain. And I'll explain how you can gain those. Then we've got the Economy board where resources start off and can be bought. 
So we started off with six spice, which are these orange cubes. One plasma, which is the blue cubes. What is that? Two cyber, a purple cube. Five terra for, a, for green. And two hollow for pink. Those are set up by rolling a d6 to determine where each of those land on the, uh, how many of those you start the game with. I imagine there will be events that might give you more of those, and those can be mined from various planets, but anyway, that will do it for the Fame and Economy boards. Now let's move over to our starting known space. Alright, so here's our exp extent of known space so far. We, we started off with Nier, which is where the kiln is, and that's another NPC we can dock with. So we can dock with them. Looks like once we we can enter and exit from any adjacent space. On a, on dock, when we dock with them, we roll a d6 and move the station on the path. So we can either move to the space here, sell an ember for 2,000 credits if we manage to get one, and then this space will let us, as a minor action, will let us draw three mission cards and choose one, discard the other two. So we'll talk, and I'll talk more about the stats for the other NPCs as we get to them. But I do need to spawn some exploration tokens, which there are, looks like there are four of those out here. So I'll explain about how each of the relevant spaces work once I get these all spawned out. So we'll start from Cruller 4 in the mess of a debris field. Okay, there's one. Now we'll go inside the nebula. Oop. Two goes down here. Three down by K that outworld that outworld. Outlaw world. See, kind of outworld. But no, I got too much mortal I got mortal combat on the brain again. Three these exploration tokens can contain various things, whether it's additional fame, damage, credits, or some of them can be duds and do nothing. But you can also trade two of them in to get either a thousand credits or a fame. And there's our last exploration token. So once we get two of those, we can just trade those in for fame outright. But anyway, a few things to note. If you move into an, if I move into an outlaw world, I'll end up gaining a gaining a bounty, which will set the enforcer after me. Potentially problematic, but some that might not be help that might not be able to be helped in some of these games. If we ever move into a into a region with a star on it, like in that red border, ship is instantly destroyed. Turn it ends. Then we have these debris fields. I believe these are debris fields, aren't they? Look at that. That is actually a very nice quick reference. Maybe I should just grab that for quick reference, but anyway. So, if I move into a debris field, one of these yellow spaces, I have to roll a d20. On a 1 to 3, ship instantly gets destroyed, turn ends, and it does impact line of sight, but I'll talk more about that when we get into combat. Anything above a 3, I can move through unharmed. And then again, we've got a space here for, my, for a mission as a minor action. And I can try to salvage. One or if I roll a one to three on the same D twenty, I get blown up. If I roll if I roll anything above that, I get to harvest a cube of cyber and take that to try to sell it. These pink borders are for nebulae. So when I enter those, I have to roll right, yeah, I roll for that. If I roll a one to a ten, I lose that much energy. Eleven through twenty, I get to move through unscathed. And then I can also harvest in here. It's upside down, so you might not be able to read it. On a 1 to 10, once again, I lose that much energy. Anything above that, I would get to harvest one, hate, one uh, hollow. That's what it is. Then up here, we've got gravity, where there's an orange path here. So once I enter that path, and there's similar gravity over here on the board with purple, with a couple of purple points, on a... I roll a d6 and move that many spaces along the gravity path, so it might pull me somewhere I don't want to be, but anyway. So that's our start of initial space. I'll kind of explain how the game works as we go through. So I think that is everything all set to go. So like I said, it's probably going to be a clunky video as I'm still checking rules, but let's go ahead and jump in and we'll start off with my first turn. Short of 
anything that changes the ship directly, I'm probably not going to transition back to the ship too much. Like if I need to, if I'm buying mods or if I need to figure out where to place cargo, then I can, then I'll probably be transitioning back to the ship. But right now, I've only got two empty spaces in my hold. So, I think we're going to start off by arming one of the engines. So I'm going to take a move action first. As you might recall, we'll use, well, we'll use this dice tower. But as you might recall, we actually, where were they going with that? Anyway, we'll just go ahead and get this out of the way. So we'll make our first roll on the D12 to see how many spaces we're moving. I'm going to use the smaller dice tower because I expect this game to get big, even playing to 10 victory points. So let's see what my first roll turns out to be. That's an eight. So I'm actually going to move one into the south, into the debris field. So I'm going to leave that on a seven. And I've got to roll a d20. Again, one to three, my ship gets instantly blown up. Anything else I can pass through unscathed. And hopefully, and even if I roll a natural 20 once per turn, that gives me one victory point. So let's see what I get here for moving into debris. That's a nine. It's kind of hard to read, but it is a nine, so I am fine. I will go two over to this exploration token, and as a minor action, I'll grab it. And on the back, I'll find... That I get to add... What is that? That's a plus five move, so I'm actually up to 11 move this turn. So... So, I'm at, so as another move, so this will bring me down to 10, I'm going to blind jump into this sector, and I'm going to choose... I'm going to... I'm going to have to tip the camera a little bit, but I'm going to choose to match this this T sector, and I'm accepting the consequences of the jump. So let's see what I find here. I find Kemplar 2. So that actually brings me, that actually is going to have me trying to jump through a planetary shield. So we'll do the shield first, and then that does bring a friend out as well. So as I'm trying to jump through a shield... On a one, if I, I gotta roll another d20 for this. If I roll a 1 to 10, I take that much damage and I lose my move. Actually, is it just 1 damage and no move, or is it that much damage and no move? I think it was just 1 damage and no move, because I had this happen in the practice game last night. Yeah, 1 to 10, can't move, lose that move. Oh, no, it is damage to the roll, so yeah. Let's see, 17 and 11 to 17, I end up with a bounty on me, which... Could be bad, but I'll get into that into why in a minute. So, and then 18 to 20, I pass through unscathed and undetected. So, it's a 12, so I do pass through, but I do get a thousand credit bounty on me. So there's the thousand credits going on me. I will pass through the shield, but we are going to need a. We are going to need an exploration token, which I will probably be going to grab. <clears throat> okay, there's the exploration token. So I have... So once again, I have ten move left. I'll spend two of it. Going down to eight. I should probably use spin downs for this. Grab this exploration token. On the back I find... I get another thousand credits, which is very welcome. And then because I've got two exploration tokens already, I can trade those in. Do I want another thousand credits or do I want a victory point? Um, I think I want a victory point, actually, which will give me a new title. And I still haven't gotten to our friend coming out to the board yet, so we find... Retethered. I'm going to see if I can... Bring the light, turn the light so I can read it. Actually, light behind me is the problem. Okay, that works a little better. A card doesn't leave play. Tigris Gate is now connected to the other gates, and players may move freely between all of them. The special rules for Tigris Gate are ignored. If the Traveler title is unclaimed, 
discard it and draw a new title. This card leaves play when it doesn't leave play, so I'll just put that over here. And now after all of that, because we discovered Templar 2, that actually brings the Enforcer out. So we'll put the Enforcer on Templar 2, and then we need to choose... I'll go through how the Enforcer works when we get to him on the turn. So, when we get to the NPC turns at the end of mine. So, we've got two different cards that could be behavior for the Templar, for the Enforcer. I'm going to roll a d6 to determine which card I'm using, and then I'm going to roll again to determine what behavior I'm using. So if I roll an odd on the... Excuse me. If I roll an odd on this on this die roll, I'm going to use this card, and even is going to give me this card. <clears throat> okay, odd, so I'm using this card. All right, and then we've got... And once again, we've got two sides here. So if I go odd, so I'm going to go odd for the top, even for this card. Once again on a d6. And I'm going to go through the relevant part of it rather than overwhelm you with everything. If you want to see the, each individual behavior, you can pause it and read. One of which you'll be trying to read upside down, but that's your prerogative. All right, even gives me the upside down side. So... We'll take a look here. Single-minded, an enforcer that loathes Loa, Loath. Target is any ship that entered Loath. Player if tied. Behavior, if no target, move twice to outside Loath planetary entrance. 1B, if a target, move to target twice. And if in range, attack twice. So yeah, that could be a big problem. Let's see, I still have... So I still have eight movements left, which is probably going to be to get though. So... Yeah, this is going to get big in a hurry. So I still have eight movement. One, two, three, four, five. Exploring is not a terrible idea either. So I think we're just going to... I could... Well, I could also stop my movement here if I wanted to and attack... But I've actually never done combat before, so could be worth. I've been wanting to try that anyway, so ooh, actually that might be a better uh, gateway. But anyway, I'm getting once again I'm getting a little ahead of myself there. But anyway, yeah, like I said, this is probably gonna be a clunky video while I check rules and all that. I usually try to practice these games beforehand. But there's just so much with Zaya to take in. I think for now we're just going to get moving. He'll be coming after me soon enough anyway. So with five more movement, I'm going to move one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to make another jump, and I'm going to match that cross sector. So there I find... Delta's Gate. So first player to use the gate earns a fame point. It's another spawn point, which is also handy. And there's another space for mild mission, for minor missions, for a mission. Which again is a minor action to take that. So I'll match it there. And then we'll move one, two, three, four, five is where I was going. And then I've got three move left. So we don't have any gates right now, which means using that's kind of useless right now. So I'll go... One, two, three. I'm not going to worry about, worry about missions right now. But anyway, so that was my first movement. My second movement, I'm going to arm again. I'm going to arm the movement again, so we'll roll the d12. <clears throat> right now, I just kind of want to put tiles out on the board so I can see where things are at. I get a natural 12 on that, so I think we'll move... One, two, three, four, and I'll match circle there, so I'm down to eight movement. So I'm matching circle. Let's see where I'm going to. I'm going to Dorovan 5. So we'll spawn that there. I was jumping here. I need a movement card, and I need to check something. Uh, yes, we actually do get another NPC. 
but I'll get to that in a second because I need to get an exploration token. Let's see, on Dorvan 5, I can actually buy, ter buy two Terra or sell a Cyber. And there is the... Oop, I saw what that one was, so... I'm trying to do this without seeing what... Okay, there we go. So there's our exploration token, which goes down there. And then that actually brings the merchant out as well. So the merchant, place the merchant on the second planet in the trade route to be discovered. And here's the trade route. We discovered Kemplar 2 first, and then we discovered Doravan 5. So we'll put the merchant out on Doravan 5. We'll put him there. And then similar to what we did with the similar to what we did with the enforcer, we'll roll their behavior the same way. So, odds, evens. Okay, evens gives me this card, which means I'll put this back under the merchant's card. And then similarly, odds, evens. Three, so odds. So a merchant is behaving as a collector, a merchant that likes collecting. Target, buy space on the next trade route planet. Behavior, move to plant to target. If arrived, buy one cargo if possible. Then if there's three cargo aboard, plus one fame point for the NPCs. So we probably are needing to stop the merchant pretty quickly. I'll go through each NPC's behavior as we go through them. As, we, as they become relevant in the NPC turns. But anyway, I've got eight movement points left, so I'm going to move one, two, three to this exploration token, which will be probably another, well, not quite another victory point, but I find another thousand credits, which could be handy. So a thousand credits. The bounty is probably more relevant in the... It's probably more relevant in the multiplayer game than this being a solo game. So I've got five movement left on this arming of the ship. So I'm going to move one, two, and I'm going to have to roll for gravity there. So I'm going to roll a d6 and move that many spaces along the path. Hoping for a one or a two so I can grab another uh, exploration token. That's a four, so I move one, two, three, four. And I, this doesn't count as my three remaining move, which I'll use one of to go out here, matching circle once again. So I find Loath, which is going to give me yet another NPC. This is going to be fun. So Loath... You can sell any cargo here for a thousand credits, and then we'll get an exploration token in a minute. So let me go ahead and I'll get the exploration token first, but that's going to bring out the scoundrel. Okay, so we've got that. And now we'll bring out the Scoundrel. There's the Scoundrel. NPCs, we spawned NPCs in a hurry here. Sometimes that doesn't happen. And then similar to what we did before, we'll grab the D6. Odds, evens. Six, so that gives us this card. And odds evens. Odds evens. Six, so evens. Opportunist. 
A scoundrel that fights smart, targeting player if damaged or carrying cargo cubes. Behavior, move to target if in range attack, repeat steps one to two. Okay, that's going to stink, but anyway, nothing I can do there. I've got two movement points left, so I'm going to move one, two, and a low aft, bring my, or two towards the low aft, bringing that down. I'm going to see if I can potentially destroy the scoundrel on my next turn. But I need to check on something here, because I need to check about blasters, about blaster combat. Um, okay, um, I have a range of one space and require line of sight, so I've got to get right up close and, wait, what do they, how do they define a space? Again, I'm sorry this is a clunk, this is probably a clunky video, but, like I said, I'm still, I'm still very much learning the game, so I'm, so I'm probably going to be stopping to check things a fair amount, but... Uh, do, do, do. Mm. There's line of sight to every... So the hex... So each individual hex is a space. That's good to know. So I can only attack with blasters from here. Okay. Very handy to know. And then I will use one last arming token to arm the engine again. Actually, I have... Yeah, that was the last two of my movement. So I'll arm again... To get a movement of 11. So, I will move 1, 2, 3, 4, I don't have anything to sell with. 5 will get me another victory point most likely from having 2, but let's see what's on here, I find. I get a plasma for free, so that might actually change my plans. So I get a plasma. I may try to go sell that. So actually, we're going to move back to the ship so I can place this plasma. Okay, so as you saw from when I was setting up my mods early in the at the start of the game, I've actually got two more spaces here that I can put cargo on. So I'll put that plasma there. And then I'll trade these two exploration tokens in to get another fame point to go up to two. So, the, so this will probably be my last action for the turn. And then you see the thousand credit bounty I've got over here. But anyway, that will do it for placing the plasma. Now let's move back over to the board so I can finish up my movement. So I'm going to lose most of my movement. Well, that's probably a bad idea with the scoundrel being right there. Although that does get it off of me. So I'll move over to the cell space on Loath. And then I am going to give him my movement to sell this plasma to get a thousand credits. Mostly I don't want the scoundrel coming after me. So that's the end of my action phase because I'm all out of actions and I'm not in range to attack the scoundrel. So now I get to go into the business phase where, hmm, let's, let me look at the, let's look at the mods again. I may end up strengthening something if I can. I've already got the strongest engine got 4,000 credits. I'm actually going to take a look at the ships. Because maybe I want to upgrade something. I don't know if I can, but... No, actually, it looks like most of the Tier 2 ships cost 5,000 credits, but that's still... That's still something to keep an eye on. And then the Tier 3s cost 8,000 credits from the looks of it. So that is still something to keep an eye on a little bit later in the game. But anyway, so there isn't anything else I can do in the business phase. Right. So I can't even buy a fame for a thousand credits either. But anyway, that will do it for my business phase. So now in the status phase, actually I'll just rearrange, I'll just rearm all of my markers for free since I'm on a planet. And now we get to go into the NPC turns. Actually, I probably don't need too much there. All right, so the merchant, the merchant is moving eight spaces toward the cell space on the next planet on the trade route, ignoring planets not yet discovered. So far, we've discovered Dorovan and Kemplar two. So, since the merchant right now is on Dorovan five, 
he's actually going to move toward Kemplar 2's cell space. So we're going to move one, two, three, right? Yeah, toward the cell space. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got the merchant down at the spawn point. That will do it for the merchant. Now let's move up to the scoundrel. So looking at the scoundrel's card, once I bring it into shot, it acquires a target. Scar scoundrel can never target the enforcer while the NPCs are all working together in the solo game. If attacked, the scoundrel targets the most recent attacker unless they're more than two sectors away. So each individual tile is a sector, whereas the space is the individual hexes. That is important to know. All right, so otherwise, Scoundrel targets closest innocent ship. Ties are broken by a D20, except I'm not innocent either, so it's not coming after me. If no ships are targeted, Scoundrel targets Loath. So, also looking at the behavior, the target would be the player if damaged or carrying cargo cubes. But since I'm not, since I'm not carrying cargo cubes anymore, I sold off the plasma that I got from that exploration token on Loath. He actually just stays put. At least that's how I'm going to rule that. So anyway, that will do it for the Scoundrel. Now let's move down to the Enforcer. Alright, let me double check something with the... Let's move an adjacent target ship. Okay, never mind. I was making sure the Scoundrel didn't attack me. But he doesn't. So we're down with the Enforcer, who's on Kemplar 2. Acquiring a target... If attacked, the Enforcer targets the most recent attack, attacker, unless they're more than two sectors away. Otherwise, the Enforcer targets the closest outlaw ship up to one sector away. Uh, ties are broken by D20. If no ship is targeted, uh, Enforcer targets the most distant lawful planet. So the most distant lawful planet right now is actually still Kemplar 2, so he actually stays put as well. So, actually... Hold on, I think I did that a little bit out of order. I think I'm supposed to do System Expanse, then NPC Turns. So I just did that a little bit. Uh, solo rules, here we go. Like I said, it's going to be a clunky video as I'm checking. Yeah, so before NPC Turns, I should have done that. So we'll pretend that those happened later. We'll do System Expanse right here. I'll zoom back out. I want the... So I want the tile where I can place the most... I want the... I basically want to place a tile with... I want to place a new sector where I can make the most connections, which I think is either here or here. Since I'm probably going to be exploring here next turn, I think I'm going to place here and I'm going to match the square symbol. So we find... Farron's Call, which is an anomaly. So, Matt, so before we go through that, we'll need two... I'll need two exploration tokens. If I end up getting sucked in via gravity, I'll end up dying here. But there are two exploration tokens if I can stop on them. This gravity, i got to roll a d12 and move along the path. This one, I roll a d6 and move along the path. So, we're matching square, we said. So I'll put that there. And we need two exploration tokens. Which, let me see if I can... There we go. Alright, so that one will go there. And this one will go here. Alright, so that was System Expanse. Now we do the... Now we do all the NPC turns like we did, like we did them earlier. And now we have to go for solo round end. So we're going to be rolling for the... So we're going to be rolling a d20 for the NPC's victory points. So there's a little chart over here that I'm using on uh, off camera. I would remove any cubes that are on the map, whether they were jettisoned or from the player's ship being destroyed. So I'm rolling a d20. Plus two for, per cube removed. Plus two for each thousand credit bounty NPCs collected this turn. Either from bounty due to destroying ships or events. Add two for each fame point the NPCs are behind. So right now they're two points behind. 
So we'll bring the dice tower back into shot. So whatever this is, is plus four, because the NPCs are two points behind. That's a nine plus two is 13, which only gives them one victory point. So they're a little ways behind, they're, so they're still one fame point behind me right now. But anyway, that will do it for the round. Now let's jump in to round two and we'll come back to my turn. Okay, I did make a small mistake in the NPC phase. So any ship that entered low, so the Enforcer actually would move toward toward me. So it would move six spaces toward the target because I entered low ath. So it would move one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll choose, I'm trying to choose something resembling an equidistant path, but anyway. Now that will do it for the NPC phase. So now we're back into my turn, and now we'll adjust the camera back up to me. So there I am the... So there's my ship, the Easy Tiger, up there. I'll put this first arm marker on my engine. And we'll bring the dice tower over here. So let's see what I roll for this turn. I get a 10. So, like I said, I'm probably going exploring this turn. So let's go one, two, three, four, and I'll match the arrow tile. So I have six movement left after this. So I'm matching the arrow tile to find Neo Damascus. So matching the arrow puts me here. Unfortunately, I can't enter a lawful planet because I am a because I've got a bounty on me. I've turned into an outlaw, so I can't enter a. So I can't enter via the entrance, which means I have to try to pass through the shield. But I'll need an exploration marker, so I'm moving there. Actually, I'm, that's a that's a neutral planet, so I'm, I should be able to enter that. But there's the exploration marker there, clear on the other side. Uh, enters an outlaw planet using the planetary entrance. Um, I I'm pretty sure I can still enter a planet with a bounty via the entrance, right? E Neutral, no special rules, so yes, I can enter. Okay, good. So I will enter through the planetary entrance, so one, two, three. And then I'll actually stop that, you can stop my action, my movement there, because I'll spend a thousand credits, and what is that gonna let me buy? Two, two more plasma. So that's one, that's a thousand more credits, and I've actually, there's only actually one plasma left. So I'll be placing that in the bottom left space of the ship. Actually, let's move over to the ship and I'll show you that. Because I'll have to move back over here to rearm the ship anyway. As you can see here, yes, the camera's shaking a little bit because I'm holding it. I'm going to be going right back to the board in a second, but you can see the plasma is down in the lower left uh, space of the cargo hold because that's where I had it last time. Anyway, back over to the ship. Back over to the board, I should say. Alright, so my goal this round is to get to this exploration token. I'll go ahead and arm the engine again. We'll bring the dice tower back into shot. I need... what do I need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At least a seven to get there. A 
that's a one, so that's not going to do me much good. I'll work toward the entrance. Then we'll arm the then we'll arm the engine again. Unfortunately, that is going to bring the scoundrel after me unless I can get rid of this plasma in a hurry. A three, which might actually help. So I'm going to move one, two, and then I'm going to move along. I'm going to have to roll a d6 to move along the gravity path. So that was two. So I move two spaces along that. One, two. And then I'll move three over there. Over to that next space. So that was unfortunate. But I'm unfortunately out of tiles, so now we're into NPC turns. First up we have the merchant who's looking to get to Kemplar 2. So we'll move five move eight spaces toward the cell space there. So Actually, buy space on the next trade route planet. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then buy a cargo, so they'll buy a spice. So the merchant will buy a spice. And then we'll be looking for the... And we'll be looking for the buy space on... The next planet, which is, which is actually back to, uh, Neo, which is actually over to Neo Damascus next. So, right back to where it started from. But anyway, that will do it for the merchant. Now I'm going to do this a little bit out of order. The technically the scoundrel should be next, but since I'm right here in shot, and the enforcer is going, still coming after me since I entered Loath, I will. Okay, so I'll move to, so I'll move the Enforcer twice, basically. So pretend that the Enforcer, so pretend that the Scoundrel is going between these two ships. I'm just doing this because the Enforcer's in shot. So the Enforcer is going to move up to six spaces toward the target. Can it get to me is the question. I think it can probably pass through everything, can't it? Um... Or instead of its normal rules, so... Oh, right, right, right. Okay, that makes sense. So, any ship that entered low F will move twice. So I'll move six spaces. So it'll move six spaces toward the target. Yes, six toward any ship that entered low F, which is me. So, taking the shortest path, I assume it'll ignore everything. One, two, three, and six... And then one, two, oop, I'm actually getting up out of shot a little bit here. So one, and what's the range on its attack? So the, okay, so it's going to be in range, so it's got to be up to two spaces away. So it'll attack with a D, it'll attack me with a D12 missile, yikes. Okay, so that's bringing the, infor oop, let's put the dice tower right here. Here? No. Right here. So it attacks me with a D12 missile. Unfortunately, oh, and I should have done the my end of turn stuff in the status phase. In this case, it would cost me it would have cost me three energy to rearm my markers. I did blast through that, but anyway, now I'm getting attacked with a D12 missile. And unfortunately, I don't have any shields to defend myself. Not that I could defend myself from a natural 12, so I end up destroyed, which means I'll get taken out of the game for the turn, uh, which means basically the rest of this turn happens without me. So if I get destroyed, I drop any cargo I was holding. Now uh, here we go. So all activations are, car are destroyed, are discarded. Cargo cubes are, cubes are dropped, so that gets dropped there. And, okay, so ship resets to full energy, all markers are reset, and any ability cards are refreshed. So, 
Yeah, so the NPCs also get, I believe it's one fame when they destroy me. So... And then the bounty also goes away. Um... Yes. So the... Yeah, so the NPCs actually do get another fame, which means they catch up to me. So, yeah, that was very unfortunate. The scoundrel... Actually, the scoundrel... Well, I should, I should wait on that. I should wait on that attack. So the scoundrel is going to move to me if... Basically, if the scoundrel doesn't get to me, I'm going to take that as it happens. So now we're going to adjust the scoundrel, who would come after me, but I don't think... I think short of going through planetary shields... Short of being able to go through planetary shields, the scoundrel wouldn't be able to reach me. So, I'm just double checking that. NPCs. NPCs will avoid. Okay, so yeah, looks like the. Looks like the NPCs would avoid would ignore everything. So the scoundrel would move one, two, three. Through the planetary shield, and it would roll with a D12 blaster. So let's see what the scoundrel would have rolled. I think either way, I'm probably going to get destroyed here anyway. So I'm not going to worry too much about it. A 10. Yeah, so I would have been destroyed by the... So I would have been destroyed by the Enforcer anyway. Because I would have jettisoned cargo, placed placed damage cubes, on, placed damage, mark, damage markers, which look like these, on my hold and on the mods. And then, yeah, the Enforcer would have picked me off anyway, so no harm, no foul there. All right, so now... Oh, and I forgot to do System Expanse again, because I'm a knucklehead. But anyway, that should have been before the NPC turns. I will spawn it up. Uh, let me zoom all the way out so you can see the current space that we have. I'll spawn it over here, and I'll match the T. So over here we find... Uh, Tafter, which is a dead world. So we're matching the T. We get ice fields, which work a little bit differently because you have to roll... Basically, they're similar to asteroid fields, except you take ice damage instead. Here you get a, mi mi a mission space, and then you can take a minor action, actually probably a full action, to excavate. If you roll 1 to 10, you get that much ice damage, which are these blue markers... And then on 11 to 20, you get to pick up one of these relic tokens, which I will get out once I get everything spawned. So one, two, three. We'll get an exploration token. Pull that one out. And now the NPCs will roll for victory points. So we'll put the dice tower right over there. Getting blown up really hurt. So we also take the plasma off the board. So that'll add plus two to this roll. Dick. That looked like it looks like a cock. Uh, yeah, I think that could have landed like that, but I'll just roll it again. It, it looked... It looked like it was cocked for a minute there, but we'll just re-roll it. I think that's the easiest thing to do. A 7 plus 2 is 9, which gives them another 1 victory point. Which also gets a new title out, so we find... The Connection. Deliver goods to outlaws. To claim this title, be the first player to... Sell all of your cargo cubes in your hold at Loath, minimum of two. So once a, once claimed, this title grants plus 1,000 credits when you sell all your cargo cubes at Loath, Loath, minimum of two. So that will be something that, we'll have to, that we can try to claim. But anyway, now I have to respawn, my, now I have to respawn myself. So the way I'll be respawning is I'll be, I'll be rolling the d20 
and I pick the spawn point closest to that roll. So we've got the dice tower here in shot. So 13, and we do have 13 on the board. I think that's where I started from, actually. So we'll respawn there. The exploration tokens and such don't refill, so that is something to keep in mind. But anyway, that will do it for that for that round. The AI jumped ahead there, thanks to blowing it, blowing me up. But that'll bring us back into round. That'll bring us into round three. All right, I'm going to go ahead and arm the engine for my first action, and we'll see how much I get to move from that. Uh, Dice Tower wants to be here. that work? Five. So I'm wondering if I just move it into, if I try to move into this nebula. Um... That actually might not be a terrible idea to try to harvest some of this hollow. Actually, I gotta look for one more thing here. Um, do, do, do. Okay, yeah, collect ex collect, collecting exploration tokens is a minor action, so that's good to know. And I will go ahead and jump into this nebula. So once again, I have to roll a 1 to 10. If I roll... On a d20, if I roll 1 to 10, I lose that much energy, including disarming some of my markers. If I lose all my energy, I get stranded. I can only use impulse, which might just be Gitfo at that point. 11 to 20, I pass through unharmed. Or I can roll a natural 20 and get a victory point for, and get a fame point for that as well. So I've tied the game. Which means I had, it cost me one to move in, so I'm going to move two, three, four, and grab this exploration token, which finds me. A ho another hollow, nice. So once more, I'm going to put that in the same spot where I've had the previous two cubes of plasma. I'm going to put that in the, and that would let me harvest one. So I think I am going to take a. I think I am going to let this move. Let that last movement go, so I can try to harvest. So I can try to harvest more hollow. I'd like to get one more and try to get that type. Bring the dice tower into shot before I roll this. A fourteen will let me harvest another cube of hollow. So if you remember. On the so, if you remember when we first looked at the ship, I actually had two empty cubes in the lower left corner. So there's that one. That'll be going on that other cube. So now I want to get that. Where do I want to get that? I might just try to get that to Loath if I can, even though that's going to cost me another bounty. But that might be worth it to get me this title and potentially more victory points because I can earn so I can earn victory points if I manage to sell at least two cubes in a, tra in a single transaction so we'll bring the dice tower into shot and let's see how many I how much I roll here I need a, I need a couple of big rolls if I'm gonna get to the low half of this Six is probably, well, it's got potential, but it's going to require a big movement. Uh, actually, one, two, three, four for gravity. This could work, so I'm going to try it. Move one, two, three. So I have three movements left, and i got to roll a d6 for gravity. A one, which is moderately helpful, which actually lets me stop and pick up this exploration token for another fame token. So I'm at for another fame point. So I'm at 
four. I have two left. And this one gives me, come on, gives me another thousand credits. And it also lets me trade in, I thought I had a second exploration token. Oh yes, I do. The one that gave me the hollow. So I'm going to trade these in and pick up a fourth victory point. So that'll give us another event, which means we find Galactic Jubilee. Players may tra while this card is in play, players may travel to the kiln and receive credits one time as an action according to their current position on the fame track. Basically, it's a thousand points for your place on, or a thousand credits for your place on the fame track. Well, first place gets a thousand, second place gets two, so on and so forth. So it's almost like a catch-up mechanism, essentially. And then we place a damage on this card at the end of each round. Card leaves play when immediately after all players have received their credits or there are three damage on on this card. So we'll place a damage there. I'm probably ignoring that though. I'll spend another movement to move back into the gravity path here. Then we'll bring the, D, the dice tower back into shot. So I can roll a d6. I'll adjust the camera up a little bit since I've got my destination in mind. A four, which I think causes me problems. One, two, three, four. Not too bad, though, because I still have one movement, so I can move up there. I'm actually not going after the scoundrel, because my plan is to get to low F and sell off this two plat sell off this two hollow. So we'll bring the dice tower back and shot for the last move of the turn. I could be risky if I want to try to pass through the shield. But we'll see about we might we might have to if I roll if I roll low here. Fortunately, if, well, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to end up one short unless I burn impulse, and I think I might. So I'm going to move one, two, three, four, five, and then because I entered low F, I end up picking up a bounty for that. And then I will burn my impulse so I can get down to the cell space on low ath. I'll sell off the two plasma, or the two hollow. What is that for us? So that's a thousand credits per hollow sold. So I'm selling two for two thousand credits. And then because I sold two, that gives me a victory point and brings me up to five. Most importantly, it actually takes the scoundrel off of my radar screen this turn. So now that I'm done with my action phase, I can go into the business phase, which will let me recharge my energy, and I can arm, I can arm my, I can rearm my energy markers for, my markers for free. And then do I want to, I think I'm going to buy another victory point, actually. So for 5,000 credits, oh, and I also get to claim this title. So as with the connection, I can, I can I collect another thousand credits when I sell all my cargo cubes at low F to a minimum of two. Actually, is that a thousand credits per uh, sell cargo cubes as an action? I think I think that's a thousand credits per uh, cargo cubes. Yep, per cargo cube. So I got two thousand credits for that, and I'm going to buy another fame point. For 5,000 credits, so I'm going to go up to 6 fame. So there's my 5,000 credits. To go up to 6 fame and get another title. So we find... Insurgent. For 2 fame points. To claim this title, be the first player to destroy the Enforcer. Once claimed this title grants, the Enforcer cannot target you for the remainder of the game. I don't know how that would work in the NPC, or how that would work in a solo game. That seems like it would be just basically turn the NPC, turn the enforcer off, which could be a very good thing potentially. But I'm out of actions. I did my business phase, so status phase. I got all of that. So status phase actually would happen. So a refreshing abilities and impulse and arming markers would happen during the status phase officially, but. Now I'm actually going to remember to do this right. So before the NPCs take their turn, 
go ahead and zoom all the way out. I think I'm gonna be placing over here, which means I still have room here, but I'm gonna be moving over to the right pretty soon. So I'm going to match the arrow symbol here, which means we are placing Red Gulch. So we've got a bunch of, so we can mine as well on here. We'll need an exploration token for that. Uh, what are these? Ast I think these are asteroid fields. Yep, so when you move into these, one to 10 means you take a damage. 11 to, tw 11 to 20 lets you pass through unharmed. Similar with mining, one to 10 you take that much damage. 11 to 12 gets you a Terra. Then we will need an exploration token for that. Matching the arrow goes here. And then we'll get the exploration token for that. And we'll bring that one out. Fantastic, so that'll go down here. Okay, so now, now that we're done with that, now we're into the NPC turns and we'll start with the merchant. So the merchant is trying to get to Neo, De so the merchant is down here on Kemplar, trying to get to Neo Damascus. So buy space on the next trade route planet, yep. So buy space is up here, which means the merchant will be moving one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, passing through the shield of Dorvan 5, except he's not going to be stopping there because he's looking to go to Neo Damascus. So that will do it for the merchant. Do we have the we have the Enforcer and the Scoundrel both in shot. So the Scoundrel's up next. Except I'm not damaged, so I'm not carrying I'm not damaged or carrying cargo cubes, so the scoundrel actually doesn't target me. The enforcer, however, does and moves actually moves within uh, Enforcer ha attacks with a attacks with a D8 missile, a D12 missile actually from two to six spaces away. So the Enforcer right now is one, two, three, four spaces away. So it will attack with a missile, with a D12 missile. So we'll bring the dice tower back and shot and hope for a low roll. Oh, and I do reset my impulse. I almost forgot about that. So we're hoping for a low roll from the Enforcer. Planetary shields don't block line of sight, do they? I don't think they do. Uh, planetary shields... Uh, probably under combat. Oh, we're not considered to be adjacent to each other, so player players must also be on that planet. So basically I have to move, so it looks like I have to move the Enforcer to get to the planet. So the Enforcer would have to move six spaces, which they can probably do. So let's go one, two, three, four, five to end up in range. So it can attack me with that with that aforementioned missile. And I'm hoping for a low roll here. A five, I can kind of deal with that. So unfortunately I do take Unfortunately I do take five damage from that. So I'll have to place that on my cargo holds. And then this is bad because I can place it on, I can place it on the mods, but the problem is I minus however many I roll, I minus however many damage mods I have on there. Although I do need to pick off the enforcer anyway for, although I can pick off the enforcer for two victory points anyway, so that might not be a terrible idea. But now we're into the NPC's victory point roll. So now I've kind of moved on a little bit. I'm three victory points ahead of them. So this roll is plus six. And they didn't manage to destroy me. So 
So plus six, I think, is all they have on that. Yep, plus six. Sixteen plus six is twenty-two, which gives them, them three victory points, and we are tied once again. So yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be a very neck and neck game, but anyway, getting a little bit ahead of myself there. So now that will do it for the for the round. Now we're into round four, and like I said, it is still very much anybody's game. We're going to adjust the zoom just a little bit here. So we're right there. I'm actually going to arm the engine marker first. I don't mind this being minus, minus two because I put two damage on the engine marker because I only need to move one space away and then I'm going to get two shots it looks like with the... Looks like I'm going to get two shots with my blasters which are also going to be minus one. So I do need to be careful of that. A three, which I'll move right there and then stop my movement. And then for the first time, I will take a shot with my blasters. So I'm going to be rolling a d8 and I'm minus one. So I'm attacking the enforcer. Starting off with a roll of four minus one is three. And then, so I have a three. The enforcer defends with a d8 shield. I do deal one damage to the Enforcer. And then I will arm the Blaster again to attack the, to attack the Enforcer again. One minus one is zero, so just for formality's sake, yeah. The defender prevents all of that damage. And then I'm going to arm my... Mm, I'm going to move... I'm going to try to move. I want to see if I can find another planet. Just to make the... Just make them have to move after me a little bit. So I'm minus two on trying to move, but I'm rolling a d12. So ten minus two is eight. And I think I can pass through enemy space. I think I can pass through enemies, right? I think I can pass through, but I can't stop there. Let's see, combat. I don't that's not telling me what I want. Um. Do 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 combat. That's still not what I want to find out. Uh, do 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 adjacency. That's still not telling me what I want. Actually, it might be in the action phase. Oh, move movement. Duh. Okay, so, yeah, um, any ships, okay, a ship may move through spaces occupied by other ships, spaces infinitely huge, may not end its movement in an occupied space. Okay, so I have, so I have eight movement, which means I'll, which means I will get full off low, th low ass. So one, two, I'm going to jump for three, matching the curved symbol, so I find... Helmont, matching curved symbol has me jumping into, has me jumping blind into a, de, into a debris field it looks like, so I'll get the exploration token for that. Um, right. Then I have to roll to see if I survive. Here I almost wouldn't mind getting blown up. Okay, there's the exploration token there. 
This is probably one situation where, like I said, I wouldn't mind getting blown up. So, we'll bring that into shot. I've got, I was 10 minus 2, which is 8. So I've got 6, um, I've got 5 movement left. Never mind, I can't math today. So, like I said, here's a situation where I actually wouldn't terribly mind a 1 to a 3. A 12, which lets me pass through unharmed. So, I've got 5 movement left. I think we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to press my luck here, see if I can get this exploration token. I still wouldn't, like I said, I still wouldn't mind getting blown up just because it'll reset me to everything. And it'll keep the scoundrel from coming after me. Just barely, but no, I survived. So I do get the exploration token. Which means this will give me... Come on. Does not want to focus for me. There we go. Nothing. So I just put that on the board to use that later. Then I'll jump. I'm going to need to make some more space here. I'll blind jump up here for my last movement, matching... What is that? Circle. So this tile gives me... The keep again, so I actually do get out of the I do actually do get out of the debris field for at least a turn. So I jump there, only need another exploration token. Okay, oop, I'm I saw that one, so I'm gonna draw again. I'm trying to... There we go. I'm trying to bring these tokens out curbside up. Just so I don't see what they are. But anyway, that's all of my... I could arm the engine one more time, and I think I'm going to. So once again, I'm minus two trying to... Once again, I'm minus two trying to move. Bring the dice tower back into shot. I'll adjust the camera slightly so you can see where my new space is. That's a one, so I actually end up staying put, which is kind of annoying, but no help for it. So anyway, now I'm, I don't get to do a business phase if I'm in open space, and I spend four energy to actually... No, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have been able to do that last move, so I'm going to end up here. I actually spent one too many mo one too many movement markers, so I'll shuffle that tile back in. So I'll shuffle that tile back in. These tiles are a nightmare to try to shuffle because they're so big, but I'll do the best I can here. Here we go. So just pretend you didn't see that that, that new tile. Then we'll give those a cut. I'll roughly flatten everything out. Okay, so I'm stuck up there on Pelmont, which is basically a debris field. That will do it for my that will do it for my turn. Like I said, it costs me four energy to rearm my markers, which I will do. Actually I could do impulse. I forgot about that, but I'm not I rewound the shuffling the tile back in, so I'm not going to. But anyway, so that's all taken care of. Now we'll get into system expanse. So I'll zoom the board, I'll zoom back out. Now this is actually starting to get pretty sizable. So actually we're spawning up here, and I'm going to match the square tile. So this one is going to take us to Neo Vostok, an ice field. So, as I mentioned earlier, so we'll be spawning a comet as well. Whenever I move into the path similar to the comet, or similar to gravity, we'll roll, we'll roll a d6. 
If the comet moves into us or we move into the comet on a blind jump, the ship gets instantly destroyed. So we'll put that... So we said we were matching square, so we'll put that there. Then I'll draw an exploration token. I'll actually grab the comet as well. So there's that. Okay, so there's the exploration token there. No, well, there's a spawn point way up here, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself on that. So, anyway, that will do it for System Expanse. Now let's get into NPC turns, and we'll start with the Merchant. The Merchant is still on his merry way to Neo Damascus, but he will actually get there this turn. So he moves nine spaces. Right, yes, to Neo Damascus, to the... By space. So, moving one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which will place a, which will buy a cargo and place one on, what is that? It's buying, it's buying, it's buying plasma, which we're out of plasma actually, so that's kind of fortunate. But anyway, so now the merchant will be heading for. Dorovan 5 next, which is way down here. So, so, so far it's going to be in between a loop of these three planets. I wouldn't mind putting the other two planets, which are Lunari or Azure, out somewhere in this side of the board, just to kind of get the Merchant out of that little loop. But anyway, that will do it for the Merchant. Now let's move up to the Scoundrel. Once again, unfortunately, I'm going to have both the Scoundrel and the Enforcer after me. So, the Scoundrel is going to move twice, up to five spaces, toward me, and attack. So let's see if the Scoundrel can get to me in ten spaces. One, two, three, four, five. Tries to attack. Can't. One, two. Actually, does... Do the debris fields affect line of sight? They... I don't have line of sight through them, so the Scoundrel... So actually it might be safe being in a debris field. Because neither one of them can actually attack me. So one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, I think I'm safe by hiding in a debris field, as crazy as that sounds. But the NPCs will still roll for fame. And right now we're tied, so this roll isn't plus anything. That's a two, so the a so the NPCs gain no fame off of that, which is very fortunate. But anyway, that will do it for the NPC round. Now it's back to me, and I need to find a planet desperately so I can repair. <laughs> Giving this scoundrel the slip would be absolutely amazing. So let's arm a let's arm the engine to move. Once again, I'm minus three for trying to move. I'll put the dice tower up here. Actually, let's bring the dice tower over here. Yep, that'll work. So this roll is minus three. Five minus three is two. Hopefully that will be enough. But anyway, I will make a blind jump up here to match circle. So that brings me down to one movement because I'm minus three. So the tile I find here is blench for an ice asteroid. So matching circle puts me here. I'll need another comet for that. And then since I am moving into the path of the comet, I will need to roll a d6 for that. So I'm going to end up here. We'll bring the dice tower right back in shot. Now I'll get the exploration marker out for the it that tile in a minute. So the comet's going to move six spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's 
close to me, but it won't get to me. I'll put the dice tower over here for the time being. Alright. Okay, so exploration token needed. And I still have one movement left. Okay. And then do I take a risk of moving into the ice field to hide? Um, not right now I don't. Maybe when I'm going to try to get that exploration, maybe if I can get that exploration token this round. Then I will arm the engine to move again, so once again I'm minus two. Trying to move. Or I'm minus three, I should say, trying to... No, I'm minus two trying to move. So I should have had one extra movement, which means I would move here. All right, that's a four minus two is two. So I'm going to move one, two, and I'm going to risk it for a biscuit here. So I've got to roll a d20... Basically, if I roll the D, basically, if I roll, I have to roll a four, I have to roll at least a four, I have to roll, if I roll under 20, if I roll under 10, I've got to roll a four to survive. But again, here's a situation where I kind of wouldn't mind getting blown up. A two means I take two damage, which means I'm going to block off the... So I take two ice damage this time, which are these. I'll block off the... Oops. I'll block off one of the... I'll block off two mar, mar, two um, spaces on the blaster. But I do get the exploration token, which will also give me another fame point. So I find... Actually, a plus five movement this turn, so that's very cool. And I'll trade in my two to get my seventh victory point. And then we get another event, so we find. This thing does not want to focus today. Power crisis. All planetary shields are deactivated. Planetary shield rolls are, ign are ignored. That reminds me. I forgot to put a damage on the... Um, where is it? The Gal Galactic Jubilee. So all planetary shields are deactivated. Planetary shield rolls are ignored. Place a damage on this card at the end of the round. And place a... And this card leaves play when there's three damage on it. So, okay. Let's see, and then I have... So what did I end up with? I think I had a... 5 minus 2 is 3. So I should have 2 movement left, which means I'll move... 2 into the path of the comet over this way. And then I'll roll the d6 to see how much the comet moves. I don't think the comet can destroy me no matter what I roll. One, two, three, four, five. I stand corrected. A six would a six would get me destroyed. A one will not, however. So that's my last movement there. And then I'll arm the I'll arm the engine again. Once again I'm minus two. A one, so I actually end up staying put, and I'm kind of out in the open right now. So that can't, so that's not very good. I'll zoom out. And then I'll have to move this light, because I think I'm going to be spawning for planetary expanse over here, and I'll match the arrow. So what do we find here? We find... 
the ice, the grinder, which is another ice asteroid field. So we're going to need another comet. And I said I was matching square. So we'll put that there. Uh, I did forget to mention quarry. So if I'm inside a, an ice asteroid field, I can take a minor, I can take an action to roll a d20. On a 1 to 10, I take that much ice damage. But 11 to 20, I get, what is that? Is that an ice cube? What is that? Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, ember, it looks like. That's what I get there. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's ember. Okay, so that's what I would get there. But anyway, we need the... We need another comet. Actually, we have all three comets out now. And then we need an exploration token in there. Okay, so the exploration token's out there. So now we've done system expanse. Let's go to the NPC turns and we'll start with the merchant. So I probably forgot to spend energy last turn rearming everything, but I will remember this time. So I spend three energy to rearm my engine markers. I would actually be in, I would actually probably be stranded right now, but I'm not going to rewind all of that back. Anyway, now we're into the NPC turns and we're starting off with the merchant, who is very easily going to get to the buy space on uh, Doravan 5. Actually, yeah, Doravan 5, since they were just on Neo Damascus. So... One, two, three, four, five. And then we'll buy a Terra. So we'll put that on the on the merchant's card. That will do it for the That'll do it for the merchant. Now time to see how which ship is actually going to end, end up destroying me. So we'll just adjust the camera up a little bit here. Zoom in. See if I can get the Merchant, the Enforcer, and yours truly all in shot. I think I can. So, I think we'll go ahead and start with the Scoundrel. So the Scoundrel is going to be moving toward me. So up to five spaces toward the target. And actually, wait a second. I think, I think they have to roll for... I think NPCs roll for comets too, don't they? So if they roll for comets, that could be ever any player not NPC. Never mind. So I'm probably screwed here. So two, three. So the end. So the scoundrel attacks with a D12 blaster. So yeah, I'm basically. I'm about to get blasted out of space, which is again not a bad thing. Aside from the losing, a, aside from the losing of. Losing my cushion of fame points. Three is not enough to do it, but I'm not in real dire. I'm not in real good straits, especially since. So I'll place that over two of my engine markers and my oop and my last blaster. But I'm yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna get blown out of space here because the scoundrel gets to attack again. And yeah, a five is overkill, but... So yeah, I get blasted out of the sky. They collect the thousand credit bounty. I don't know where I'm going to put that. I'll just put that down there. Gain another, vic gain, gain another fame point. And now I'm in kind of dire straits where... I'm fortunate that the Enforcer doesn't move because there's no target right now, but the NPCs can win the game on this roll, so... Right. So yeah, they can, they can win the game because as we go into the solo round, as we go into round end, I'll bring the Dice Tower a little bit better right there into shot. So the NPCs can... So the NPCs are plus two right now because of the... So I actually do get to reset everything, which is a consolation. The NPCs are plus two because of the bounty they collected this turn. 
So the okay. So yeah, plus two means a means the AI can means the uh, the uh, NPCs can win the game with a roll of at least a nineteen. Because a nineteen plus two would give them twenty one, which would give them, give them three victory points and end the game. So let's see what happens here. A 2 plus 2 is 4, which does give them one victory point, pulls them ahead, but it doesn't just end the game, and there might still be hope for me to get there. But anyway, so now that we'll do it for the round, which means I roll a d20 and spawn again. I'll roll, then I'll zoom all the way back out to see where I spawn. Um... That's a six, so let's zoom all the way back out. Actually, yeah, that was a six. The It moved in the dice tower, so... Move all the way back out. And... Wow, this is getting big. Looks like I'm able to just barely get everything in shot. But anyway, I will end up spawning all the way down here without the bounty on me, thankfully. So, that will bring us into a new round, and we'll drop into my turn. The NPCs are definitely in position to close out this game, so I need to try to fly through this if I can. But actually, I should have an extra fame point from getting the connection, so I should be at 8. Anyway, we'll go ahead and we'll arm the engine now that I've had to reset everything for our first roll. We'll bring the dice tower in shot. I'm probably going to go for that this exploration token in Red Gulch. That's my plan. Alright, there's a 10, so... One, two, let's see how much damage I take. So I've got to roll a d20 for that. A 19, so I'm actually clear of that. And so I do get the exploration token, which means I find... Plus, plus five movement, so that's very cool. I'm going to blind jump down here for another movement, so I'm at 8, and I'm going to be matching the line. So here I find... Smuggler's Den, which actually bring, is going to bring out... So we'll match there. And I'll jump here. And we'll get an exploration token, and that'll get the cell sword out. And now I am going to have to start moving everything in that direction. Okay, so we'll get that. And that also brings out the last of our NPCs, the Cell Sword. Okay. Spawns inside of the Smuggler's Den Planetary Shields. So we'll put this Cell Sword in there and we'll take a look at its card. Your friend for the right price, and we just discovered it. As an action, a player adjacent to Sellsword may place a thousand credits on this card and take the card from the current owner, if there is one, placing it to the left of their ship card. This player is now the owner. Immediately control. Immediately after the owner's turn, they may take a turn with the Sellsword. The owner may move the Sellsword up to seven spaces per turn. As an action, the owner may have the Sellsword attack one adjacent ship per turn with two D6 blasters. Contingency. If Sellsword is destroyed by its owner, or while it has no owner, no fame points or credits are awarded. On a defense, if attacked at defense with a D12 shield, kills 12 damage for or higher on this card. On kill, you get any credits on this card and two victory points. So I think we're going to have to risk it here. I'm going to start moving everything a little bit to the right. 
do it like that because I'm going to be exploring a little bit this turn. Comment is there. All right, so I still have eight movement, which means I'm going to move one, two, three. See if I take damage from this asteroid field. Uh, the enforcer's there. Okay. I think we're all straight there. Bring the dice tower down. That's a, oh, that's a 10. So I actually take 10 damage of... So I actually take 10 damage. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Which means I'm going to block everything but one of my arming the engines because my plan is to make a bee I'm gonna have to make a, I'm gonna have to make a beeline for the smuggler's den. Um, I'm gonna make a beeline for the smuggler's den. Outlaw status be damned. Actually, I have to cover the armed one up, but I do get the exploration token here, which will give me another fame, so I get... Another five movement, which is very helpful. So I do get so I do get to turn those in for another fame point. Then the title I get here. Survivor. To claim this title, be the first player to become stranded in a nebula, then return to full energy at a planet. Once claimed this title grants, you must no longer roll against yourself when entering a nebula. Okay, so I do have, so after that I have five movement left, which means I will move into the, I will move two, three. I'm going to end up becoming an outlaw, so I get a bounty on me. But I'm also, I'm also, I'm also going to end everything there. So that'll stop my action phase. I'll move into my status phase next, which... Or, no, the business phase next. So I get to repair, recharge my energy for free. I'll spend my thousand credits to repair all my damage that I just took. I'm fortunate that I got that unlucky on the... So that spent my thousand credits. Um, okay, I don't have any credits to buy a new ship with. And I can't buy the last, I can't buy the last fame I need to win the game. So that's probably that's really not going to matter in the grand scheme of things, I don't think. But anyway, so now in the status phase, I don't I would get to claim. Wait a minute, what's the freeze? I'm not. I'm probably not going to worry about the freeze right now because I just because I haven't been doing it. But uh, it doesn't say anything here, so it's probably just a. So it's probably just the... Oh! Looks like that's the freeze phase. So during your status phase, place one ice damage in every space that is orthogonal, orthogonally adjacent to ice damage. If due to freezing, your entire hold is currently full of damage, ship is destroyed. Okay. So ice doesn't spread into normal damage. Okay, good to know. Anyway. So, that will do it for my status phase. Now we need to be, now we need to hope we don't hit a whammy. So the AI can very much win the game. Actually, before we do that, we need to do, let's not be stupid. Let's do system expanse next. And we're going to zoom back out because we're going to be expanding down here. And we find lost space and we're going to match the arrow with it. So we'll just put it. Right there, so it's basically just more spaces to move into. Anyway, now that'll do it for System Expanse. Now let's move down to the NPCs. The merchant looks like he can get to the buy space on Kemplar 2, which is the next planet in the trade route. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which will buy another spice. Is that what they buy there? Yeah, spice. So we'll place another one there, and then since there are since there is three cargo aboard, the NPCs get one victory point, move up to nine. 
So I suspect the game is just going to end in my loss this round. But anyway, let's see what the... I don't think either the Enforcer or the Scoundrel is going to get to me, so let's see what... Actually, the Scoundrel doesn't move because I'm not damaged or carrying cargo. The Enforcer does, though, moves up to six spaces. So let's zoom in on the Enforcer. So the Enforcer is up here on low F, which means he'll move six spaces toward me. So move twice to outside low F planetary entrance. So actually, he's just outside low F. So he just moves there. That's a very uneventful turn. And now we need the dice tower and shot, because now we're basically... Now we're basically trying to duck everything. We are, fortunately the roll isn't plus anything, but as long as they roll above a three, the game's just over. Uh, that was a cock die. A 19 would have definitely lost the game for us. A two, so we're still, so we're still actually kind of in it. But we definitely need to get moving. So, how do we do that? But I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself there. But it is back to our turn, so let's move down to the Easy Tiger. There is a way I can actually steal the game here, but I'm going to have to get, I'm going to have to get pretty lucky to do it. Still, it's worth a shot. So we're going to start off by arming the engine, the engine to go moving. So basically what I'm trying to do is the first player to use a gate actually does get... I forgot to draw a, an exploration token way out there, but I'm not going to rewind that now. Out in the, out in the brink. But you can get an exploration... To, you can get a victory point for using a gate. So I'm going to try to... So I'm going to have to try to find a gate, hopefully getting some big rolls to do it. A one is not very helpful, so that's going to move me there. Then we'll arm an engine to move again. That'll work a little bit better, so I'll move one, two, three, and I'll match the curve symbol over here. So I have seven move left. And we find lower stratus. So we'll put that up here. We'll match that there. And I am jumping into another nebula, so we'll get the... Get an exploration token, and I'll roll for jumping into a nebula in a second. Okay, there's the exploration token. Right, the dice tower is still in shot, so once again, 1 to 10, I lose that much energy. 11 to 20, I pass through unharmed. Wouldn't it be amazing to get a natural 20 here and just win the game with that? I'm not betting on that, though, because I know my relationship with Lady Luck. A two, so I lose eight energy, which actually leaves me empty. How does that work out? Um, become stranded in a nebula, then return to full energy in a planet. So I'm actually not going to end up stranded, because I still have seven move left. And I've got impulse that I can use. So I'm actually going to move one, two, with no further consequence. Let's see what this exploration token is. Wow, the last fame point I need to win the game. So that brings me up to 10 fame, that brings me up to 10 fame. And amazingly, minor miracle to some, but I have won this game. So let's move back up top to wrap this video up. Somewhat to my amazement, I managed to pull this out of the fire. It was definitely a, it was definitely a dogfight that came down to the wire, but I ultimately pulled it off in the end. So I really do enjoy this game. 
I could definitely see, my, see myself weaving it in as potential background content later down the road. Maybe once I finish my Hero Realms background campaign, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself on that musing. Anyway, that will do it for this playthrough of Zaya, Legends of a Drift System. Next week, we'll commemorate Victory in Europe Day as we try to make it come a little sooner in an alternate universe. We'll be doing that by trying to assassinate Hitler in Black Orchestra. Thank you for watching the video. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so you get my content. Be well, stay safe, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll be back with more videos in the future. Until then, take care everyone.